<laughs> Look at those fools! <laughs> oh man, do they never learn? Yeah, what are you laughing at? Can't you see that? Sh that, 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 that right there. That right there. Those PlayStation fans think there's gonna be a showcase in 2024. Late this month or early February, they're they're, they're still uh, believing that they're gonna get a showcase. Wasn't wasn't that supposed to happen last year? And I swear they started begging for Xbox games now. No? <laughs> exactly. I mean, they thought it was gonna be last year. Now they're kind of hoping it's this year. They've got no roadmap. They've got no uh, play games coming first party. They're begging for Xbox games, and now you've seen them actually coming out of the woodworks and going, please, sir, could I have some more? Please? Are you aware that Xbox has already released their showcase? What? They've announced it? Yeah, it's already out. No way! Yeah. So what you're saying is, right, let me get let me get this straight, that Xbox has announced, has done a showcase last year, the mystery showcase that was supposed to happen for PlayStation the top secret showcase didn't happen. And now they're begging for another show year of showcase that may not happen. They're begging for Xbox games. And then Xbox just comes along and says, move. And then says, here's another showcase for our fans. Yep, pretty much. Let's go. So it seems through all the controversy that has been going on for the past day or so with Xbox game third party games being announced for, you know, the Switch or to, you know, the PlayStation platform. And who knows, maybe it's actually Pentiment for all we know, considering uh, people are now saying that the Switch can't handle Hi-Fi Rush. So maybe it is Pentiment. And uh, that still goes against what Phil Spencer promised. But what we want to see here is this right here. Uh, you know, you heard my boy. <laughs> Even he's <laughs> surprised that they're still trying to get a PlayStation showcase going. And Xbox has already, on the Jan 18, has announced that they are getting a showcase. Now, what's important about this, you can clearly see here you've got Avowed, you've got Hellblade, you've got Indiana Jones making an appearance. I'm not quite sure what this one is, but someone's probably going to tell me anyway. But... It's uh, from Oxide Games. So, yeah, this is, like, really, really cool. I'm loving the aesthetic on this one, the art style. So this is going to be quite interesting. But, yeah, I'm really excited to see what this is actually going to be. We finally have a day. I will be streaming this at 8, p it's, uh, 8 p.m. GMT. So definitely tune in to this channel to see my live reactions of this. But, you know, this is the type of news, uh, I guess... Microsoft was hoping to get out, especially from all the bad drama that was going on over the past day or so with the way the, the news just came out. And I guess being fueled by the, you know, the console wars, the fan wars, it didn't really help. But as you can see here from Aaron Greenberg, we are thrilled to kick off 2024 with our second ever developer direct next Thursday, January 18th. Hope you will join us to experience the magic of visiting these studios and teams for an inside look at these games coming to Xbox, PC, and Game Pass. None of this is going to be on the Switch. None of this is going to be on PlayStation. Now, this is the type of messaging that they want to give. Now, I kind of wish that they weren't allergic to, to the word exclusive, because I really feel that Microsoft really doesn't like that word. Or if they are, liking that word they really don't want to use that word i it i don't know why maybe because technically the games aren't really exclusive they're not exclusive to game pass they're not exclusive to xbox and they're not exclusive to pc they're kind of i i know people are going to say it's it's exclusive to the xbox ecosystem but steam is not in the xbox ecosystem so it, it kind of is a bit weird with steam right but regardless of what it is i'm i'm, I'm super excited for this developer's direct, you know, what well, I'm still curious as to what this game is. It probably is in the back of my mind. I just can't really think of it. But Avowed actually looks cool. I'm, I'm just looking forward to seeing, especially Indiana Jones. That is something that I'm very much looking forward to seeing. And I'm very, very excited for it. Very excited for it. So let me know what you think, you know, in the comment section below. What are your thoughts? 
on the Developer Direct 2024, coming at six, you know, 18th of January, before the PlayStation Mystical Secret top, you know, top ninja showcase that probably won't appear. You know, with them announcing that the games are coming to Xbox, PC, and Game Pass, has the ponies dreams of seeing these games shattered? And what exactly are they actually getting? Is that going to be announced on the day of the developers direct? Uh, we don't actually know. And maybe, uh, you know, what Tim Dog said is actually right. At the end of the day, you know, a lot of this information is being passed around, but the people that are leaking this information early are just doing it to stir up buzz, trouble, annoyance, frustration, SEO, you know, metadata. And it's worked, I guess, because all it took was Nate the Hate and Shinobi to actually come out and basically pass on information that they had no right to pass on. Pass on a rumor that they had no right to pass on. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. And whether it's actually true or not, still remains to be seen. Now, there was a listing that we saw regarding the whole, you know, a game coming to old Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch. And that's why it kind of gives me the thought process that this might actually be a game like Pentiment going over to other platforms. But, you know, Xbox decided even this morning that they were going to come out fighting. They were going to, you know, they were going to seek violence. And they said, New Year Energy. They said, Bread, in our new toaster, you have you seen it? I actually really want that toaster. You know, say what you want. I still want it. Activision Blizzard King, first party games. And, and this is where I have a problem. I, I just want them to use the word exclusive. But at the end of the day, I guess the word exclusive doesn't really hold up anymore. Because like I said, the games are on Steam. If they were only on the Xbox Game Pass app on PC, then you could say that they are exclusive because they would be exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem through Game Pass, but they're not. Playing more indie games, and indie games are amazing. Seriously, you you know, more people should spend time playing indie games rather than the AAA games because they have a lot more effort put into them rather than just a graphical flair. Console, love. And of course, I've got out here toast popping out of our new toaster. Uh, on, on the side, grass you can touch if you want. I guess that's because of all the salt that's been going around lately. Disliking a game you've played for hundreds of hours. Calling out those, you know, weirdos that play a game for 900 plus hours on, in Starfield and then say that they don't like it. That's a proper weirdo. Blaming your connection for your KD. Clearly calling out PlayStation here. And of course, console wars, something that they were actually fanning and promoting not so long ago. But I guess they put it here because they definitely didn't want to put it here for, you know, for obvious reasons. But uh, this is the article that I was talking about. Now, there is actually a, a full article about this. Now, this was from 2021, right? And what Phil Spencer said, but if you're an Xbox gamer, customer, the thing I want you to know is that this is about delivering great exclusives games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. And what it was referring to here was Bethesda titles. ABK obviously hadn't uh, gone through yet. It wasn't even a thing yet, I don't think. So this was actually referring to Bethesda games, ZeniMax games. And he made it clear and he said, that's our goal. That's why we're doing this that exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. Now, to me, you know, people have disagreed with me saying that Steam is not a platform. You know, I still beg to differ because games like Final Fantasy XIV, if I've had, if I've got the desktop, you know, the native launcher version of that game, that my game from there won't work on Steam. It's a different platform. The launcher on its own isn't just the launcher. It's a different file of the game. It's a different skew of the game. It's its own platform specific skew. And maybe that doesn't apply to every game, but it does apply to a number of games, which makes it its own platform. So I think that's a bit of a gray area at the very least, right? But pushing that aside, pushing that aside, I'm okay you know, with it being on Steam, whatever, right? That's okay. But it's the fact that he said that these games wouldn't appear on anything where Game Pass doesn't exist. And as far as the community is concerned, 
Game Pass isn't on the Switch. It's not on the PlayStation. So releasing games like Hi-Fi Rush on these platforms basically goes against what he said. Now, business strategies change. But if you give a promise to your community, you need to at least sit down and have that discussion with them and get that point across if you are changing strategy as to why you're changing strategy. Now, a lot of people have been saying, why are you so against more people playing games? It's got nothing to do with that. Why aren't these same people turning around and going to Sony or Nintendo and asking them to share their first party exclusives? You wouldn't get to catch them dead doing any of that. Not at all. The only time that they're actually coming out of their woodwork, coming out of their cave, digging themselves out from a grave is when it applies to Xbox because everyone wants those Xbox games. And that's, that's, that's what I'm getting now with how big Xbox is becoming with Bethesda abk and soon they're going to be doing more acquisitions clearly everyone wants a piece of that pie everyone wants those games and in the case of playstation where they have no first party games coming this year i guess they're a little bit salty and i guess they need that little bit of a helping hand now in 2023 phil spencer did come out in an interview i think um in a tokyo interview right where he said game pa games will not be exclusive to game pass now I guess he's now saying that though Game Pass is the platform, when they make games, they're not exclusive to Game Pass. And I think based on what we're seeing on screen right now, you know, this picture here and what he said in that interview, I just think there needs to be some clarity. You know, I think if Phil came out and actually just, spoke with the community he, he he's done that number of times right he calls himself the people's person and i believe him you know there's been a number of times where he's gone into posts to twitter and just replied to random people about what they're saying and i appreciate that i just think he just needs to give a little talk a little speech a little video and just say look this is what we're doing this is our plan this is our goal and i think if people actually see where xbox you know where he wants to go what his vision is i think more people will be on board i think the reason why people are upset right now is because of the mixed communication and the fact that they just don't want it on the playstation platform i'm seeing a lot of people saying if it goes onto the switch i really don't care because Switch is its own little kind of weirdo in the far corner doing what it wants to do. And it gets away with murder. It can do absolutely anything it wants. Overcharge for games, overcharge for the console, release games at 20 FPS and no one cares. Everyone still plays it. You get a game at 30 FPS on PS5 or Xbox 360 and people will absolutely lose their mind. But when it comes to Nintendo, no one cares. They can release a game at 10 FPS and it will still be nominated for Game of the Year. So, like I said, it's really weird, but if, if 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 the game was going to Nintendo Switch, most people I don't think care about that. Um, obviously, they would want something in return from Nintendo, but that's just a give and take mentality, right? But I think that's where it's at, and I think, and I hope that during the developers direct, there'll be a segment in there where they actually talk about this. You know, like two three minutes, just explaining what's going on, and maybe announce the game that's going over there you know, finally put an end to the speculation and whatnot and just say, look, this is happening on the day. This is happening. This is the game that's going. And if there's anything coming to Xbox, make that announcement too. I mean, that's that's the way I see it. And this here, as you can see from Dark Vortex, Zenimax employee is excited for an unannounced game in 2024. An original 15 plus ID software title has been rated uh, 2704-23. Could be the secret surprise announcement a lot of insiders have been teasing for 2024 indiana jones maybe a quake a new ip and as you can see here it's a uh, it's coming to all platforms pc playstation 4 nintendo switch xbox one playstation 5 but there is no mention of series x and series s so my assumption is that this game is already available on series x and s because that's the only thing i can think of for it not to be available but you let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, as you can see here, it's a 15 rated game, Project 2023B, assess computer game, variable duration. So there's no estimated time for it. But that's all we have for this video. And if you have found this video useful and enjoyed it, or just want to show your support, do consider hitting that like button, hit that red button to subscribe. We are trying to hit that 7,000 subs for January. 
I think we're roughly on about 6,200, 6,250. So we're actually a good way into it and we're only at the start of the month. So hopefully uh, you can support me and help me get to my goal. Of course, if you want to support the channel further, you can do that through my YouTube membership by clicking on the join button. We've got different tiers starting from one buck. We've also got my Patreon. And of course, we've got the super thanks underneath the video. Links to my Patreon in the description below. Don't forget you can join my Discord where we can continue the conversation. You can recommend stuff for me to react to. So hopefully I'll see you around. Right, I'll see you in the stream later today. Remain legend.